Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, extreme rain, Goddard SVS animations, a cosmology slap, stellar super flares, and a not-so-shocking coincidence about Earth's large-scale ongoing changes. We are starting with our star, spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun was pretty quiet. The central coronal hole is turning through the zero heliographic longitude. Minor motions on the incoming limb. It's a combination of the filaments you saw in the opening sequence and a C-class solar flare producing a little CME. Quick note for prayers to go out to these regions being hit by astronomical amounts of rain in tiny little windows of time. It was Australia yesterday, but it is happening daily and doing so in an amplified extremities pattern that is in fact making floods worse and droughts worse as well. This is the SVS animation of the ongoing groundwater monitoring and changes over time. Up next, in preparation for the arrival of Bepi Colombo, SVS put out a global map of Mercury based on messenger data. The rub is that the most critical data from messenger is about Mercury's magnetic field, which will be compared to Bepi's data to determine if there are magnetic changes there, as there appear to be on all the planets and the Sun. Now, let's jump out into space, sort of. It's a simulation, an animation, an article signaling what has been hinted and more than suggested, even in the ranks of the journals Nature, Science, and the top astrophysics journals. The WIMP dark matter particle is dead. They have officially moved on to axions, and they're hoping this math into a computer can tell them about its character. Folks, a special video is truly due, updating all the official observer scientific positions, but in short on this one, and this is a message for Berkeley and every other cosmologist on Earth. You said Dr. Peratt and I were pseudoscience in 2011 for saying they would never find wimps, and instead they'd find more dust, plasma, and the importance of magnetic fields, which is what Hubble stacking, SOFIA, and other new technologies have done. I'm pseudo told you so today, and I'll tell you this, there are no axions either. You're looking in the wrong direction. Up next, quick update on stellar flares spotted by TESS. They've spotted nearly 4,000 flares that hit what we would call X10 and 440 that hit X100. The more of these they spot across the galaxy, the more it confirms the sun's ability to hit those marks, even on rarer timescales. Now last but not least, the Earth's magnetic field began weakening faster in 1859, the modern shift. The magnetic poles always meander but they jerk direction and sped up psychotically in 1859. This was also the exact time of the last solar super flare, albeit on the smaller range, about X45 to X50. And it turns out that what they used to call the modern sea level rise was firmly set in place immediately thereafter. Folks, between the flare, the geomagnetic data, the carbon spikes, the temperature records, and now the sea. Can't wait to see what happens in a bigger flare. Folks at suspiciousobservers.org, the deeper looks so far in 2022 have been fairly top-notch. 16 episodes so far, and later today we'll get the 8th members podcast up there for you as well. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.